It's Mary's Mini 2. Mary Strikes Back. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Jessica. And I am Brian. So we are into our Mary's Mini 2, Mary Strikes Back. And uh, we are on day number two of this, and this will be coming out on day number three. But we figured that we would go ahead and do a video that explains sort of how to prep for a Mary's Mini. Yeah, this is our second time doing it. So last time we had no clue what we were doing. Yeah, we were just waiting. Like, I feel like this time we have a little bit more of an idea of what we're, we're actually doing. So we thought we'd share. I think a lot of people think about doing it, but then don't really know what it is because there's not a really, there's not a lot of like great information out there about it. There's just bits and like scattered here and there. And then I think after that, people kind of maybe don't really know like, okay, what's the first, like, what's the first step? Where do I, what do I do? So we are just gonna kind of break it down. It's pretty simple. It's, you know, yeah, it's true. pretty basic, but we're just gonna kind of break it down of how we kind of prepare for a Mary's Mini. Yep, but first off, Jessica, what is a Mary's Mini? Oh, I'm glad that you asked. I have some notes. It's, I was looking earlier at this website. It's called crocsinthekitchen.com. Oh, those people. Shameless plug. And there is an article on there that explains exactly what a Mary's Mini is and has links to a bunch of resources. So we'll link to that article below and then you can check it out. But Mary's Mini was developed by Mary McDougall and her husband, who is Dr. John McDougall. So it was developed it not to be like a long-term diet that you, you know, necessarily like stick on forever, but more of just like a jump start or, you know, if you're struggling and you need it just a little kick start or, or that kind of stuff. Um, it's meant to be more temporary. And so it, they suggest 10 days to start. You can do it for longer and there are people who've done it for way longer. Um, but it's basically, it's just supposed to simplify everything. Yeah. It's like a, a more simplified version of the McDougal diet. So you basically pick one starch. It could be potatoes, which is what we picked. And yep. I would say the vast majority of people pick. Or you could do something like rice or corn, but I just feel like some of those would be so difficult. Potatoes are so much more versatile. I could probably still do corn. I, I don't think I'd have that much trouble with it, but. So yeah, you pick your starch and then during the period that you're doing the Mary's Mini, you can only eat that one starch for your starchy vegetables. Like yes. You can't have any other starch. Yes. So um, you can also eat. Non-starchy vegetables, uh, things like uh, cauliflower, broccoli, uh, Mary has suggested eating things like peas and carrots and uh, that kind of stuff, but nothing that is like, you know, an additional starch. So, you know, you can't have any whole grains. You can't have any of the other things listed, uh, Jessica said, so no corn or uh, any of that kind of stuff. And she actually suggested that like even sweet potatoes are their own separate yeah. starch. So, so if you pick sweet potatoes, then you can only do sweet potatoes. You can't yes. do... And we actually, for our last Mary's Mini, we just pretty much stuck with russet potatoes the entire time. And we're doing the same thing this time just to keep it even more simple and basic. And so the idea is kind of just to simplify everything. But in addition to the non-starchy vegetables and the starch that you pick, you can also have some light condiments and sauces, which really helps out compared to something like maybe doing two weeks of plain potatoes. <laughs> so you can use seasonings. They even say you can use salt unless you have like blood pressure issues or something where your doctor's telling you to lower your sodium, they do say that you can use some salt during this diet. Yes, McDougal um, is fine with the salt unless otherwise stated by your doctor. Yeah, so basically what you can't have is anything other than what we just described. So you can't have anything that it, you can't have any fruit, which is the major, like a lot of people miss the fruit when they start doing this. You can't have processed sugar, you can't have tofu, you can't have, um, like beans or lentils or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that you can't have and basically, you know, it all comes down to just kind of simplifying everything. Focuses all of your food choices down to just a few things so you can lose the weight and sort of reset your mind and reset your taste buds a bit as well and just kind of like make it, I don't know, a little bit more boring or at the very least more challenging. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the steps. Yes, so these are our steps for prepping for your Mary's Mini. So what is step number one, Brian? Step number one is set a date 
and clear out all of the stuff that you aren't supposed to eat on a Mary's Mini. So if you got fruit lying around, either eat it or donate it or do whatever you need to do. But you notice our banana. Yes, all the our bananas banana are gone. Our banana is empty for, one, for the very first time. <laughs> yes, you just don't want to have a lot of stuff around that is you know, going to tempt you to yeah. eat that stuff and you know, and you don't have to get rid of like we have stuff that's in our pantry like we still have our cans of beans and all that kind of stuff yeah but you want to especially the perishable stuff so if you're deciding okay i want to do mary's mini and you pick your date then that'll give you you know maybe it's we picked i think i don't know it was like five or six days out that gave us plenty of time to make sure that we ate all the perishable stuff that we had laying around that wouldn't be allowed on mary's mini yes so yeah just give yourself a little bit of time we used our little calendar that we have on our refrigerator back there and i blocked out the time we decided on february 3rd which was a monday um our idea was that we would prep over the weekend and be all ready that did not happen nope. because we were busy editing videos for you guys um, and blog posts. So uh, we actually did not prep at all. So we went into this like Monday and just went straight in. Yes. So yeah, after you do that, step number two is going to be to do some research. So I think that it's really important for you to really understand what the Mary's Mini is. Obviously, we just gave you a brief description, but... I think seeing it from Mary who, you know, Mary and Dr. McDougall who came up with it, um, they have a webinar out there that you can watch and it's basically, I don't know, like an hour long of them just talking about Mary's Mini and answering questions. Um, there's two newsletters um, from the McDougall newsletters that came out that originally were, the, you know, where the original information about Mary's Mini came out. Um, I'll link to those in my post below. But there's also different websites you can look up for recipes. I know Brand New Vegan has a ton of recipes that he's developed that are Mary's Mini compliant. We also got something new. Um, our friend, the uh, Miss Potato Wisdom is what her YouTube channel is. Janine gave us this book. She sent it to us, The Potato Reset. And it is full of a bunch of different recipes that you can, that are pretty much, I think, all compliant on Mary's Mini. So her program, The Potato Reset, is very similar to Mary's Mini. And so, you know, you can find stuff like this that you can just, you know, get recipes ready, but really understand what you're doing, why you're doing it, what the rules are before you, you just jump right into it. Yup. And watching videos like this. Yeah. That's other research. And we'll link to our playlist of all our other Mary's Mini videos if you want to check any of those out from the last time we did Mary's Mini. Step number three is... Buy a huge amount of your starch. Uh, we started out with about 30 pounds of potatoes on Monday, and I've gone through about half of them already, actually. <laughs> Uh, and that's of, the, lot, of the fresh potatoes yeah. that we purchased. Well, and a lot of that is prep too. So you're not, we, it's not like we've eaten 15 pounds of potatoes, but we've, we've eaten a lot of potatoes. Yeah. Um, but you want to have more on hand than you think you need. So you think like, oh yeah, you know, one bag of potatoes, you will fly through one bag of potatoes very quickly because yep. your main thing that you're eating is the potatoes or whatever your starch is. So just make sure you get more than you think you'll need and um, then you can avoid going back to the store every other day. Yes, but we bought several bags of, of just regular russet potatoes, but we also bought a bunch of frozen potatoes. Yes, so hash actually... browns and home fries. Uh, so <laughs> it's just, we have a ton of potatoes on hand right now. 12 bags of frozen hash browns. <laughs> yeah, because we they go through hash sale. browns. They were on sale. Oh yeah, they were and on so, sale. But we, we're really lucky we have this Mr. Dell's brand that we can get in our grocery stores. Um, and I'll link to them below so you can see if they're near you. But they actually have the only one ingredient, which is potatoes. There's nothing else in it. There's no other anything in it at all. Um, and a lot of people get hung up on trying to find that. If you can't find that, just try to find one that only has like, you know, potatoes and what is it, like dextrose or whatever, like, yeah. I don't know, whatever. It, it, an anti-caking agent or yeah. anti-sticking agent. Yeah, so just try to find one that has the very most simple ingredients that list that you can find that doesn't have any oil or anything like that added. It doesn't have to be 100% just potatoes, but we're lucky enough to have that. We also like to buy these other uh, little like home fry ones, and those yeah. do have one other ingredient in there, but... Um, but yeah, stock up, we, whatever you can fit in your freezer for anything frozen and then the, um, the fresh potatoes, like, or whatever your starch is, stock yeah. up. 
Also included in that is all of the other vegetables that you are going to eat on the Mary's Mini. So that is any of the fresh veggies that you want to have. Remember things like onion and cauliflower, broccoli, uh, any of those, carrots, or zucchini, zucchini. carrots, like the, any of those sort yeah. of light vegetables uh, non -starchy. are non-starchy, <laughs> are perfectly compliant with Mary's Mini. So you can buy as many of those as you like. But also I would suggest buying the frozen steamable uh, kind because it just makes it so much easier if you, if you really want to bulk up even more of the meal uh, from just the potatoes, then you can have all of these other really nice vegetables. Not to mention you get a bigger variety of nutrients and uh, you know, it just makes it healthier all around. Yeah, so we like to keep a ton of bags of frozen veggies on hand. Uh, and like he said, those are just easy to throw in the microwave and then you have something quick. If I get home from work and I don't have potatoes ready to eat, I can just eat a bag of veggies real quick. Um, but the other thing is the fresh veggies. So we actually ended up having some veggies left from our salad prep last week. Yeah. So every week we do a big salad prep where we chop up fresh veggies. And those have actually come in really handy, putting throwing those into like the frozen hash browns. So things like chopped up bell peppers or um, what else do we have? Like shredded carrot, um, like julienne zucchini, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I would actually recommend prepping some of those too, just to, just to give yourself some variety. Um, and we happen to have some leftover that worked out really well this time. Step number four is... Make sure you have plenty of condiments, sauces, seasonings, all that kind of stuff on hand. So you want to make sure that it's compliant versions of different stuff. I mean, they do, they don't really specify, oh, you can't use ketchup that has sugar in it or anything like that. But we like to make our own ketchup actually. So we made a giant batch of our spicy ketchup. Yep. And we're actually probably gonna need to make some more because I've been using quite a bit of it. But we'll link to that recipe below. That one's a good, a, definitely a good one for Mary's Mini. Um, any other kind of sauces that you wanna make that are compliant, um, you can, mustard is amazing. Yes, mustard is Just, like an absolute savior of a yes. condiment. We, we have regular yellow mustard, we have spicy brown mustard. Um, We've we, got British mustard. British mustard, we got all kinds of mustard. So buy whatever mustard you like. We, you know, we do try to find the ones that have lower sodium just because that's, that's our thing. But um, you can also do things like hot sauce or sriracha or different kinds of salsa. We have the one salsa we like to get at Trader Joe's that has no salt added, which is really nice. Um, just anything that you could add to your veggies and potatoes to make them taste better. Because after a few days, you you know, today I actually ate a, a plain baked potato and I was like, this is actually not too bad. But after a few days, you're gonna need some sauces to carry you through. Um, and so we will, again, in the links below, we'll include a bunch of different sauces that we like to use um, and all that. And our last and final step is step number five. Which is pick a few cooking methods and cook everything in bulk. It is one of these things where if you just did baked potatoes, I mean, you could probably do it as, you know, we did for two weeks. It's perfectly fine. But why do that when you've got something as versatile as a potato? And this is specifically like potato. I can't tell you about what people do for rice or corn or any of that kind of stuff, but for a potato, it is super versatile. And you can cube it up and you can make mashed potatoes or you can use it in a, a soup. You can cut them into fries and put them into an air fryer. You can uh, peel them and roast them under a broiler. You can, I mean, like it is so like just so cool how many different ways that you can actually cook a potato. So pick a couple that you actually really, really like. Uh, I know for us, we really like the mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. We really like just baked potatoes, obviously. Yes. And we really like fries. Well, Jessica really, really uh, likes fries. I really fries. like the air fried. I like doing the fries in the air fryer and we just got a new air fryer. So it's pretty fun to try out. But I do recommend, like he was saying, there's so many different ways you can do it. I recommend really trying to find a couple that you enjoy and then having those on hand. And then you can experiment in smaller batches with, with the new methods until you find new methods that you really like. Yeah. But you'll run out of potatoes quicker than you are, whatever your starch is. Yeah. You'll run out quicker than you think. And so it's, you know, like right now he just, I mean, he was cooking, I got home yesterday and he was cooking like 
I don't know, you were like baking potatoes, you were air frying potatoes, you were doing all kinds, you were mashing potatoes. And in our fridge right now, there's like barely any potatoes left. So we're gonna have to go bake more potatoes after this. So whenever you do, you know, bake up, don't just bake one potato, bake a, an entire tray of potatoes. And also, you know, I mean, uh, you get that thing where you can cook a potato and then you get to cool it and then you can reheat it later on. And they say that increases the resistant starches. I haven't actually read a lot of the scientific studies on it, but that's what people have told me on the YouTubes. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, it, who knows? It might be better for you. All I know is that generally whenever we cooked a potato, yeah. cooled it off and then cooked it again, it, tastes it better. tasted better. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's that worked for us before, but, you know, we can season stuff now, so we don't yeah. necessarily have to do that. But it works really well for keeping yourself on track so you're not tempted to just go off and, like, eat something else when you're like, but I've got a bunch of baked potatoes in my <laughs> refrigerator right now. It's like I should probably eat those before they go bad or something. Yeah. You know, so... Find the few cooking methods that you really want to stick to and then make a massive amount of stuff. I can't tell you like how easy it was even tonight. I got home and I had a bowl of mashed potatoes. That bowl was just already sitting in the refrigerator and I came home, microwaved it, put a little nutritional <laughs> yeast on top. Boom. Done. Ate my dinner. That was nice. Yeah. So I think those are, that, those are all of our steps for preparing yourself for the Mary's Mini. Um, so hopefully if you guys are doing one or thinking about doing one, this helps you guys a little bit. Um, but one of the things, so there's a couple other things we wanted to do in this video. First of all, I know a lot of people are doing Mary's Mini right now. So if you are, please comment below and let us know how you're doing. Um, let us know how it's going for you. If you started with us, you're probably on like the end of day three when this video is coming out. So we definitely want to hear from you guys. I know you guys have been posting on Instagram. Um, we're doing this along with our friend Martin, Martin the Great Potato Mage, and also our friend David, who has a Facebook page called Making, Making the, the Most, most of, of the, the Second, second half. half. Yes. And so we'll link to those below, and you can follow along with them as well. And if you tag us on social media, we'll definitely see your stuff, and we really like looking at it. But the second thing that we need to do is tell them about an exciting announcement. Oh, is this another confession? No. Have you been eating uh, chocolate toffee potatoes? No, I have not been eating dark chocolate toffee potatoes. So the second, <laughs> the second bonus thing for this video is we are going to be doing another live stream. Oh yeah, that's on right. On Sunday, you didn't even remember. I completely forgot. Um, so we're going to be doing a live stream on Sunday, this coming Sunday, which is February 9th. Mm -hmm. So we're doing it at 3 p.m. Central, our time zone which is 1 p.m. if you're in the Pacific time zone. If you're in mountain time, 2 p.m. If you're in East Coast, that's 4 p.m. If you're in London, that would be 9 p.m. I don't know, is England all in one time zone? I believe so. Um, well, I know it's 9 p.m. for our friend Lisa in England and she better be there or I'll be really sad. Lisa, and you have to make Mike join too. Um, who else? Oh, Martin will be in Berlin, which will be 10 p.m. for him. And that's one of the reasons that we actually wanted to do it yeah. a little bit earlier is because we wanted some of our European friends to be able to join us. And um, Martin, actually, we might try to figure out if we can make the technology work to like Skype him in. So the whole theme of the live stream is going to be Mary's Mini. Yes. Um, we will take other, I'm sure we'll answer other questions, yeah. just general questions and stuff like that too. Um, but if you have questions related to Mary's Mini that you want to ask, you can go ahead and start leaving those in the comments below and we will put, you know, start putting together a list to answer during the live stream in case we start streaming and there's only three people and we don't have any questions and <laughs> who knows? I don't know if anyone's going to show up at 3 p.m., but... Um, that is the plan for Sunday. So yep. we're super excited to do that. And, um, you know, hopefully a lot of you, if you guys are doing Mary's mini, you can join in with us and bring your potatoes and eat. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, obviously if you aren't following us on social media, you should probably yes. do that because we keep posting stuff on Instagram and, uh, you know, different photos of what we're eating throughout this Mary's mini. And Jessica seems to be having a blast with this. Uh, just, uh, I, I don't know, it looks great to me. Uh, but you can also find us on Facebook. We, we post stuff there and, you know, you can send us messages and all that kind of fun stuff. 
Also, if you have not subscribed, please do so and click the bell that is right next to it so you get all the notifications whenever we post a new video or whenever we go live. Uh, but I think that's all I got. That's definitely all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.